Ian, we have a Patreon, don't we? We do. Go to patreon.com slash CU podcast. And when you go there, you'll see all the little bits and bobs you can enjoy. The little extras. Bits and bobs? Bits and bobs. So, uh, you know, if you if you support us and help us out with some uh, uh, some crisp lettuce, some cheddar chips, uh, we will, we can we can offer you uh, this stuff in return. The full uh, video podcast mm-hmm. uh, bonus bits. Uh, weekly uh, bonus bit podcasts that we record before we start the main podcast, uh, uh, more or less weekly writing, um, hangout sessions. Uh, there's a pin club, okay, and these poll topics. Is, so in second place, is grading or reselling worse for video game collecting at eighteen percent? Graded game collecting wow. that confronted Pat at PRGE eighty two percent, and just a little bonus on this. I can quickly mention my confrontation with an Amico slash Tommy Tellerico fan. Oh, you didn't bring it up in the intro. Uh, that's all right. It's I mean, okay, it's, well, it's confrontations. You can share the stage. It won't be as long as my conversation, probably. Uh, we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it till the end. I, I, I can bring. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring it up at the end. It's okay. going to be short. I'm okay. not, I have no interest in so, going through every word. So obviously, Ian and, and, and me have made ourselves, quote unquote, targets of the, you know, the sealed speculator slash collector community over the years um i've had conversations with these folks i've been yelled at in emails by these folks i famously or infamously was yelled at in person at P- prge 2019 by good old uh, uh danielle from nostalgic investments the name that makes your stomach turn i hate that name nostalgic investments name. <laughs> uh she yelled at me while i was trying to set up the panel with the socal retro gaming expo folks at the time and before PRGE this year, it's been three years, I knew something similar was going to happen. I, I knew that I was going to be approached by at least one person to have a conversation slash argument about it. And I was. And it happened at the exact same time as when it happened last year. The Friday when I'm unboxing books and I'm tired and I'm trying to set up, I unbox over 100 books and they weigh a lot. I individually unwrap them from the bubble wraps and I sign them and I place them out. It's 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 a lot of a lot of grunt work and it usually takes me like an hour to two hours and I was hungry and I was waiting to get back to the hotel for my pizza date with Norm that we talked about on the exclusive Patreon podcast, Patreon concept. Crust podcast. with a delicious bubble. Ian had already left because he didn't have this, the amount of setup as me, but they set up, you set up your stuff, you will click kid's book, you set up the pins and his t-shirts, you were gone by then. Oh, that's right, because so, you had to wait around for something. I had to wait an hour for my books to arrive. That's right, okay, got so it. So I'm right. setting up my books there. This is about, I want to say it's like 5.30, mm-hmm. 5.40 or something on the Friday. And someone came up to me, an individual named Peter Peter, and immediately says, hey, I just want to let you know that you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying. I wrote down my thoughts, Ian, about how the conversation went here. Pretty detailed. Yeah. I remember how these conversations go for the most part. And they said, hey, I don't think it's right that you attacked me in your video. And I looked at the person. I had no idea who they were. I'm just like, who is this person? Who is this person that's saying I attacked them in a video? I'm usually pretty good about knowing who these people are. So this person revealed. Oh, they said that I had said that. In our coverage of the Mad Dog video, twisting my words and misrepresenting me, that, that Carl did the, res- the response, and then I played some of Carl's video. It, right. w- it was React Inception. I I played a clip where Carl said these people say there's investors, and then Danielle is talking to this person, saying, "Yes, th- 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 this game's gonna be worth a million dollars. I'll say it a hundred times." They're talking about how they want to invest in games, so. He claimed that I said afterwards, I said that these people are attacking me, which I never said. But at the time when he first said that to me at the table, I'm like tired. I'm lifting books. I'm trying to think, what is he talking about? That I'm trying to remember what I said in a video that came out a month ago that we said like really quickly. So I said to him, I don't think I said that to you, that I said people should attack you. I think I said, I think I said at the time that like these are the type of people that attack me or something like that. Not, not not individually calling this person out. And I didn't individually call them out. I never said their name. No, you didn't. I didn't say go after them. I never say that. So I was, I was already put on my heels because I didn't expect this person to approach me like that and to make an accusation that of something I didn't do. Sure. So this is a tactic that these people, in general, people do this sometimes. Um, they will try to, um, try to 
have gain a negative reaction out of you in order to attempt a bonding of a friendship during the conversation. And this person, this, I will say it, sleazeball attempted to do this with me. Uh, try to say, oh, you attacked me. I actually apologize. Looking back, I should. I said, I'm sorry if people came after you. Uh, looking back, I should have said, I didn't send people after you right. uh, at all. But then Ian, within three minutes said, oh, I think I should be on your podcast. Try to flip it to be like, oh, I'm going to establish this friendship. I should be on your podcast. No. These are what these people try to do. And these are the type of people that attack you because they have so much money at risk. So I went back and I and here's the clip of what I actually said at the time. I'm going to replay the clip from that video that we covered on September 23rd. And very wealthy people, especially those from the comic, coin, and card markets, buying games because they wanted to make money. And this isn't just a hunch. The wealthy people who do spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a game literally admit that it's to make money. This is a little different than a collectability piece. Obviously, you can collect it, um, but we bought this as an investment play. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's justified. Um, this will be over a million dollars someday. I, you heard me say it. I'll say it a hundred times over. This should have gone. <laughs> like, I'm been. ecstatic. These are the people that attack you. These are the people that attack you, meaning <laughs> in general, you. And now specifically, both of you that in that video at PRGE. And I don't want to say this person was not belligerent. They weren't like raising their voice too much at me, but they were condescending, they were aggressive, and they really thought that I would have them on the podcast, either with Ian or without, to give their side of the story. So I'm gonna go through, I wrote bullet points of their arguments that we're gonna dissect. So really, we're gonna have Peter on the podcast right now. Uh, because first of all, they are friends with both Danielle and Garth, Mad Dog Gaming, really good people to be friends with. Uh, when I pointed out how he, how Garth lied about me in his video and manipulate quotes, uh, I called him out on being associated with someone like that would do something that bad. And he said, oh, everyone has friends that do things others may object to. That may be true. I don't have friends, Ian, that make manipulative and lying videos because they're afraid of a bubble bursting on their investments. Right. I don't personally associate myself with people like that. They're going to be that that much of uh, go into the gutter with their activities. But, you know, if you think it's acceptable, that's fine. And like I said, it was an attempt to get me to feel bad to befriend this person. Because, oh, this person, atta uh, you know, attacked me. I never attacked the person. And I pointed out, this is the funny thing about this. I said I was reacting to Carl's video. I was reacting to Carl's video. Carl really spotlighted you a lot more. Carl's video has over 800,000 views. Mine has 50,000 views. In, in that sort of similar time span. Uh, Carl's the one that really made me aware of, of what you what you said in this video, uh, Pete. I, he's the one you should have more of an issue with, not me reacting to it. That's just my opinion, but Carl doesn't come out to these conventions uh, to do that. Um, and never pointed listeners to him. He practically begged to be on the podcast. And I have witnesses. There were, I feel bad. There was two individuals that wanted to stop by and talk to me. Mm -hmm. One wanted to buy the, uh, a certain NES guidebook. They had to hear our conversation, our voices getting raised for about over 20 minutes Jesus while I was unboxing. Christ. And they tried to save me. They tried to like interject to like get him to go because we were just uh, spinning. All the greatest hits came out in this conversation that we've heard before. You see the bullet points? Said the market, Pete said the market was undergoing a correction. And I said, like I've said in the podcast, 70 to, 80, 70 to 80% downturn Decrease is not a correction. I think it's hysterical to hear that. He said that he was a true collector. He started in 2015, came from the coin collecting slash investing world. Um, coin world, comics, cards, that's where a lot of these people come from. We talked about that in the past. I brought up uh, the, the the connection between WADA and Heritage Auctions, the fact that Jim Halperin owns Heritage Auctions, was a founder and also was a co-owner of WADA. He said... Ian, in quotes, people are allowed to know one another. That's always the nice. I mean, people way. are allowed to know one another, but it starts raising questions and eyebrows. Because you can have impropriety, improper relationships. That's why you got to keep ethics. business rep business relationships separate. He said that the Jim Halper and I brought up the I brought up buying the Super Mario Brothers for a hundred thousand dollars. He said that that was public. 
<clears throat> they put a, a press release on their website. If you want to say that's public, fine. Sure. But like, that's not to me because like, if, if you went on Pawn Stars with the cart and said like, oh, by the way, the, the where this cart will might eventually be sold, the person that bought it owns the site it's going to be sold on and also invested in his co-owner of the grading company that is sitting in. That to me would be public. And they would obviously never do that because people would be like, well, this doesn't sound right. This does not sound right. This sounds like this smells like collusion. Uh, it was never stated anywhere after that, after that uh, uh, press release relationship. Um, I basically said, uh, Ian, if you're following along here. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, he got really offended when I told him, as long as you don't, you or in general, any collector doesn't try to do market manipulation or anything unethical, I don't care. I don't care what you do. You want to buy any game you want, I don't care. Stick it up your ass for like here in its nice acrylic case. I don't care. That's when he got actually very annoyed. He got very annoyed. I, and I said this quote, you either abide by ethics or you don't. So I was basically saying this is not like, it's not like, it's like being pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. Like, there's not really in between. There's not really, well, I'm going to be semi ethical on this. That's just the way this works. Um, this is where even the, the two the two fellows next to me started to like kind of snicker and laugh when he started getting to this. Can you read this quote to me right here? Because I'm he said that, yeah, I got it right here. Uh, I know I'm looking right at it. Where the, the he said that graded slash sealed game collecting is new. Yeah, oh, so the graded slash sealed game collecting is new. Told him it has been around forever and VGA has been grading games for over 10 years. The interest in it might be relatively newer, but sealed game collecting has been around forever. It's not a new market. No, it's not. So that I asked, well, this is what I said, why do you think Heritage Auctions only started getting into graded games a few years ago when they could have done this the past 10, 12 years? I said, why? And why were they only exclusively selling WADA games and not VGA? I think they started to, but they weren't the first two, three years. No, they weren't. Um, he said, oh, you'll have to ask Heritage Auctions, not me. So it's a nice, I'll just play dumb. I'll just pretend that this is all in the up and up. Um, when the conversation turned, when like we obviously were spinning our wheels, he was getting more agitated. I was getting more agitated because it was like 20 minutes now. And like at some point, you already you made your fucking point. Um, you're not going to be on the podcast. Just go away. There's people waiting to, to you know, to talk to me. Oh, um, yeah. He got more agitated than I did. And the people talking wait, were trying to say, like I said, they're trying to interject. Even one said this. Uh, I don't know. The Jim Halpern thing sounded, sounds pretty sketch. We, we brought up the relationship. Sure. So they were trying to just like nudge him away. It wasn't going to happen. And finally, I basically said, well, I was, I was like, he was tr tr starting to walk away because I realized we were nothing left to talk about. We're not going to be friends. I don't have to like you. You're not going to be in the podcast. That's it. Sure. We're done. We're done with this. So again, I should have said this at the time, which I'll come back to the, the fundamental question. Why do you care what people like Ian and me and Carl why do you care about our opinion about this stuff? Why do you care so much that you want to come speak to me publicly about this? And I'm under no obligation. This is not fucking 60 minutes or crossfire. I do not have to have another side of, of a story on this. This is a podcast. This is an opinion podcast. Yep. You put out your podcast. You talk to Danielle about what you think uh, is going to be worth a million dollars. We're going to have our point about things. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Yep. yep. So, before you get your Amico thing, no, uh, I'm not going to do it. This is too long. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll do the Amico thing next. That week. was like 15 minutes. I'll do the Amico thing next week. You'll do it next week. That's fine. Um, so, what I want to say about it is this: I don't just talk. I talk to people when I go to conventions. Too many games, Retropalooza, Portland, SoCal. I don't go and try to make issues with people that are seal collectors, people that work with Golden Auctions, people that work with C now CGC people that work with even WADA. I'm friendly with everyone, but I also get information. I, I, I talk to people and learn what's happening. And even the people that like work for some of these companies or are the collectors know that this is a, a downturn and that it's like, they won't say to me directly, but in their heart, they know that this, this downturn was coming. They knew this was happening. Sure. They knew that, that this was going to be a bubble that was going to be burst and it was going to come down to earth. And it's just amazing that you have people that can admit to that because they, they because they actually have you know 
they, they, they're not disingenuous. And you have the people that are so desperate to cling on to a narrative because they have so much equity tied up that they're scared. They're scared it's going to get worse and worse and that they could be out of a lot of money. Because to some people, this is their livelihood. They'll yeah. buy and sell comics. They'll buy and sell coins. They'll buy and sell now graded video games. This is, this is their livelihood. That's not our problem, though. It's not our problem that if you enjoyed this speculative rise, then now you you can you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't enjoy the rise, but when the fall comes, you can't bitch at us because we called it how we saw it. That's it. That's it. I wish you were there, Ed. I'm not sure. Maybe he waited for you to leave because he didn't want to to have both of us there. But like, I didn't. I, I didn't know this person. I was like, I didn't know who this person was. I had to go back and remember. Oh, it's, it's from that short clip. Just insanity.